Hello, my name is Dr. Rory Robertson and welcome to this presentation on shotgun metagenomic sequencing. In this guide, we will explore this comprehensive DNA sequencing method that helps to simultaneously identify a variety of microbes and their functions within a biological sample. We'll discuss its applications, benefits, and key steps for conducting a successful study using shotgun metagenomic sequencing. So what is shotgun metagenomic sequencing? Shotgun metagenomic sequencing is a powerful technique that reads all genomic DNA in a sample. This is different to amplicon sequencing, such as 16S or 18S ribosomal RNA sequencing, which only sequence one gene region in a sample, and therefore are limited in the types of microbes that can be measured. For example, 16S sequencing can detect bacteria and archaea, whilst 18S sequencing can detect fungi and other eukaryotes. Shotgun metagenomic sequencing, however, can detect all of these simultaneously. Sequencing all regions of genomic DNA in a sample allows for a comprehensive analysis of microbial communities. This includes providing insights into both the identity and functions of microorganisms. Often the genes within a microbial community can tell you much more than just the types of microbes that are there. So what are the applications of shotgun metagenomic sequencing? The method is used widely across various fields to explore complex microbial ecosystems. It therefore has a number of applications in industry, medicine, public health, and more. In environmental microbiology, shotgun metagenomic sequencing can identify and classify microorganisms in soil, water, and air. For example, this method is used to study the impact of climate change on microbial communities in ecosystems like soil and even permafrost. These microbiomes are critical for nitrogen fixation or supply of nutrients to plants, and therefore it's important to know how they change with the environment. It's also used in medical microbiology. In medicine, shotgun metagenomic sequencing is used to diagnose infections and to study the role of the human microbiome in health and disease. For example, in hospitals, this technique aids in detecting and preventing infection outbreaks by identifying pathogenic microorganisms in clinical samples. As it also analyzes microbial functions, it can also be used to study antimicrobial resistance within infectious bacteria, which can help guide clinicians to the most suitable treatments for patients. Shotgun sequencing is also used in food microbiology. It is used to identify microorganisms in food products, ensuring safety and quality control. For example, it plays a key role in tracking foodborne disease outbreaks, such as those from E. coli or salmonella contamination in food processing plants. Finally, shotgun metagenomic sequencing is also applied in industrial microbiology. In industrial settings, it helps optimize processes involving microorganisms, such as biotechnology and wastewater treatment. For example, the method is used to monitor microbial communities in wastewater treatment plants to ensure efficient processing and reduce harmful byproducts. As you can see, shotgun metagenomic sequencing is becoming an increasingly important tool in many industrial and research applications, and it may be suitable for you. However, there are a number of factors to consider when planning your metagenomic study. Proper cost planning, functional profiling, and minimizing contamination will directly impact the success of your results. The requirement for functional profiling or deep taxonomic profiling will also determine whether you conduct shotgun metagenomic sequencing or simpler, cheaper amplicon sequencing. The first consideration is cost. Prices start at around $120 per sample, though this can vary widely depending on the depth of sequencing required. More sequencing depth gives you more information about different microbial strains or even single nucleotide variations in genes. Greater depth, however, means greater cost, but depth isn't always necessary for all applications. The next consideration is functional profiling. Shotgun sequencing can reveal functional potential by profiling microbial genes. The requirement for functional profiling will determine whether you conduct sh shotgun metagenomic sequencing or simpler, cheaper amplicon sequencing. So it's important to consider whether you need to know about microbial genes and if so, at what depth. The breadth and depth of taxonomic resolution should also be considered. Metagenomic sequencing, depending on the depth, 
can identify individual species, strains, and even single nucleotide variants of microbes. It's important to consider what level of taxonomic resolution is required for your study. Taxonomic coverage is also important. Unlike amplicon sequencing, metagenomic sequencing can identify bacteria, viruses, fungi, archaea, and other microbes all at the same time. Shotgun metagenomic sequencing requires some bioinformatics to analyze. Intermediate to advanced expertise is needed to handle the large amount of data generated, depending on how deeply you want to analyze this data. It's important to consider if you have this expertise or where you will get it. Amplicon sequencing databases are very well curated. However, metagenomic, se metagenomic sequencing databases are newer and therefore can sometimes fail to identify rare microbes from undersampled settings. Therefore, it's important to consider these databases. You also need to consider sensitivity to contamination. High sensitivity to host DNA contamination can affect results and adjusting the sequencing depth can mitigate this. Finally, bias and standardization is a critical consideration. While shotgun metagenomics is untargeted, experimental and analytical biases can still occur. Standardized protocols help ensure consistency and minimize errors. For example, samples that are expected to contain lots of host DNA, such as skin swabs, can be difficult to analyze by shotgun sequencing as the microbial DNA load is low and the human DNA load is high. Preparing your samples correctly is one of the most crucial steps in shotgun metagenomic sequencing. Let's go over three critical factors to ensure the accuracy of your study. Firstly, sterility. Sample containers must be sterile to avoid contamination from external microorganisms. This is especially important in samples with low microbial biomass, such as swabs or tissue samples. In such cases, it's also important to collect sampling controls so that you can correct your analysis for environmental microbes that are present in the sample. Temperature is also important to consider. It's important to freeze your samples as quickly as possible after collection. Depending on your resources, you can store them at minus 20 or minus 80 degrees or use snap freezing in liquid nitrogen. This helps to preserve the microbial DNA. Timing is also key. If you can't freeze samples immediately, temporary storage at four degrees Celsius is acceptable for most sample types, but freezing is always preferable to maintain the integrity of the DNA. If you can't access freezers quickly, a range of preservation buffers can help to preserve microbial DNA for days or even weeks. These steps will ensure that your samples remain intact and uncontaminated, giving you the best chance at high quality sequencing results. Now that we have our samples ready, the next step is extracting the DNA. This involves several sub-steps that are essential to ensure a clean extraction of microbial DNA. The first is lysis. This is the first step where cells are broken open to release their contents, including the DNA. This is conducted using both mechanical and chemical measures. The next is precipitation. Once the cells are lysed, the DNA must be separated from other cellular materials. This step is vital to isolate the DNA for further processing. Finally, there's purification. The DNA is then washed to remove any impurities, leaving behind clean, high quality DNA that can be resuspended in a water solution for analysis. Each of these steps must be done with care to avoid degrading the DNA or introducing contaminants. Many commercial kits are available for you to optimize the DNA extraction from your particular sample type. With the DNA extracted, we now move on to library preparation. This involves several steps to make the DNA suitable for se sequencing. The first is fragmenting the DNA. We break the DNA into smaller pieces using mechanical or enzymatic methods to ensure it can be read by sequencing technologies. This is where the term shotgun sequencing comes from, as the DNA is fragmented into many pieces as if shot by a shotgun. These will eventually be stitched back together computationally to read the DNA. Then there's ligating the barcodes. Molecular barcodes or index adapters are added to the DNA fragments. This allows us to track which fragments came from which sample and which bacteria during sequencing. Finally, there's cleaning up the DNA. This ensures that only the DNA of the desired size and purity is kept for sequencing. It's a crucial step to make sure that the sequencing results are as accurate as possible. Once sequencing is complete, the next big challenge is data analysis. 
The vast amount of data generated requires a structured approach depending on your research question and needs. Metagenome assembly is a process that stitches together overlapping sequences to reconstruct the genomes, mostly of unknown species, but also known species. It's particularly useful discovering new microorganisms, but can also be useful for comparing microbial strains at high resolution to track them over time or across different sample types. The other approach is database comparison. If we're working with known species, we can compare the sequencing data against public databases, and this helps to identify species that are present in the sample, even at low abundance, using marker genes. These methods help us to make sense of the large data sets generated by shotgun sequencing, allowing for a better understanding of microbial diversity and function. However, there are multiple bioinformatic analysis approaches that could be applied depending on how you want to analyze and interpret your microbiome data. To conclude, the practical tips to keep in mind when planning your shotgun metagenomic sequencing study include sample selection, so making sure your samples accurately represent the spatial and temporal variability of your study area, and this will ensure your results are comprehensive and reliable. Collection protocols, so ensuring strict protocols should be followed to prevent contamination during collection and storage. Then sequencing coverage, optimizing your sequencing depth to ensure that the identification uh, of all microbial taxa of interest. Controls are very important to consider, so don't forget to include negative and positive con controls to validate your results and detect any contamination or extraction bias early on. And finally, data analysis. Choose data analysis methods that are tailored to your specific research questions. Assembly and alignment tools vary based on the type of study you are conducting. These tips will help guide you through a smooth and successful study from sample collection all the way through to data analysis. If you want more detailed information on how to plan and conduct a microbiome study, Microbiome Insights have put together a comprehensive guide that is free to download on their website. In conclusion, shotgun metagenomic sequencing is a powerful tool that enables us to explore microbial diversity and function in great detail. Its applications span across environmental science, healthcare, food safety, and industrial processes. Thank you for joining me in this journey through metagenomic sequencing. If you have any further questions or are planning a microbiome study, feel free to reach out to the team of experts at Microbiome Insights who will be happy to discuss how they can help.